Greg Geikema, Coach Ross, Coach Ross, Greg Geikema. We all had childhood dreams. My childhood dream was to play high school baseball. In 11th grade, I enrolled in a new school, and that's the first time I met Coach Ross. Now, Coach Ross was intimidating. He was physically fit. He had played college ball. So for two days, I tried out in front of Coach Ross, did the baseball drills. At the end of two days, Coach Ross called my name. Dykema, I want to see you in my office. I showed up in Coach Ross's office. He looked at me and said, Dykema, I'm afraid you just don't have the muscular ability to make the team. And I was very disappointed because this has been my dream for so long. I contemplated giving up, but then I thought, I've got another year. I can train hard my senior year to make the team. So I trained hard in the off season. I mean, I was still kind of a small guy, but I came back determined to make the team. My senior year tryouts, Coach Ross was there, still intimidating. Two days I did the tryouts. I did the push-ups and the pull-ups. I did a few more than the year before. And at the end of two days, I heard Coach Ross's voice. Dykema, I want to see you in my office. And I was crushed because I knew that I had not made the team. In Coach Ross's office, I sank in the chair opposite him. He looked at me and he said, Dykema, I'm just shocked that you showed up. I never thought you'd come back after getting caught last year. But then he said, but I tell you what, if you don't mind playing in non-league games or in blowouts, I think I can find a spot for you. And I said, yes, thank you, Coach Ross. This has been my dream. I wanted to play on the high school team. I was so excited. You see, Coach Ross, he cared for me. Now, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, I want to tell you, sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for. Because in the first game I played and I struck out twice, once with the bases loaded. I began to think that Coach Ross, well, he, he just felt sorry for me. When I did hit the ball over the following weeks, it was weak ground balls to the infield. Now, the low point in the season was in a practice, midway through the season. And our coaches had this silly plan they devised. When a teammate would make an error, they would have to run a long lap around the ball field. I was in the outfield and the ball was hit towards me and I, I couldn't see it. The sun was in my eye. I put my glove up and the ball missed my glove, hit me in the glasses, broke my glasses. My forehead and eye were bleeding. The pain in my eye was nothing compared to the pain of the embarrassment I felt that I was taking a spot that someone more deserved should be here. And now I was getting hurt. I thought Coach Ross would think I'm such a fool. Players ran over. Coach Ross ran over. He said, Geikema, are you okay? I looked up with a bloody eye and said, do I have to run twice as many laps, Coach? And my teammates, they laughed. And they ran back to their spots. They thought, well, he's making a joke. He must be okay. But I'll never forget this. Coach Ross stayed behind. He leaned in. He smiled and put his arm on my shoulder. He said, Geikema, you just earned a lot of respect with the guys. Coach Ross was rooting for me to fit in with the guys. He didn't necessarily care about winning, losing, catching the baseball. And my confidence suddenly went sky high. Coach Ross cared for me. The next game we were playing Morley Stanley, and we were losing 13 to 0. Blowout, that meant Coach Ross called, Wake him up, grab a glove, go to right field. So I'm, I'm excited, I'm bouncing out to right field. But then just all the girls and the girls softball team, their game got over next door. So all the girls I like are now coming over to watch me make a fool of myself. Nobody hits the ball to right field. That's where you put your weakest defensive player. Fellow Toastmasters, the third batter of the inning hit a ball to right field. And I'm putting my glove up and I'm saying, please catch it. I, I don't have a spare pair of glasses. And the ball lands in my glove. And I kind of swagger off the field like I had it all the way. Still got a bat. Third pitch, next inning, base hit, left field. It's my first hit. Now the truth is, I played in 10 out of 20 games that year. You see, while I only had the one base hit, Coach Ross knew my skill set. He put me in as a pinch runner. 
for my speed, so I ended up scoring five runs. The sad news, six years later, my parents called me, and I'll never forget. They said, Greg, we're sorry to say that your coach, Coach Dave Ross, well, he was killed in a motorcycle accident last night. My heart stopped. I so wished I had thanked him more. I so wished you would. My childhood dream, Coach Ross, you played a part in that. You played a part in my self-confidence. You see, Coach Ross cared for me, but at that time, I then realized I also cared for Coach Ross. At the memorial, my parents grabbed this poster of Coach Dave Ross, and here he is. And I still have it to this day. And I'll never forget Coach Ross. What did Coach Ross teach me? He taught me that... When you're on a team, when, when you're with it, a group of people, that bench player, that, that person with the least talent, you need to care for them. You need to nourish them just as much as your superstar. Treat everyone the same. I learned from Coach Ross, we don't know how much time people have left. I thought Coach Ross would have 20, 30 more years left where I could thank him. He died at the young age of 46. Do you have a Coach Ross in your life? Is there someone that you need to thank while they're still around? If they've changed your life, if they've cared for you, I urge you to go out and say thank you. While it's been 24 years since Coach Ross passed away, I still, with a grateful heart, can say thanks, Coach Ross. I know you cared for me, cared for you also. Mr. Toastmaster.